Hello folks. I am going to make a video here about the reassembly of the uh, 010 automatic transmission section, uh, Volkswagen Audi transmission that is found in Volkswagen Vanagons and I believe in some Audis. I believe there are a few subtle differences. Uh, but I have a Vanagon, which is the van that you see behind me, and that's the van that's the vehicle that I'm working on. Um, I have a bunch of other videos on YouTube about my artwork, so I have not ever made a video like this before, um, as far as, uh, walking through a mechanical procedure, but, um, I am making it because I did not find such a video online when I was looking, and I would have appreciated seeing something like this, um, walking through the, uh, the innards of the transmission. So um, there's a couple things to keep in mind when I'm making this video. Um, one is the most, probably the most important thing is that the transmission that I'm going to assemble is not one that I'm going to put in my van. Um, the reason for that is that uh, the transmission in my van blew up. Um, it didn't literally blow up. It, it, had, a, <laughs> it had a problem and left me stranded. And uh, so I took it out and I secured a second transmission. Um, and from these two transmissions, I rebuilt one good one, which is uh, this one right here. So this is the transmission that I just finished rebuilding um, with all the best parts from the two transmissions. And um, what I'm doing now uh, is... Uh, I'm going to reassemble the backup transmission. In other words, the one with all the parts that I didn't use, um, basically because I don't want those parts all over the place and I'm, I want to keep them in the correct order um, <clears throat> and be able to put the transmission on the shelf for a future rebuild probably. Um, but what this means is that I'm going to be getting through the rebuild or the reassembly of the transmission relatively quickly. Um, and I, um, there are certain things that I'm not going to be doing, like cleaning every single part and stuff like that. I'll talk about that um, when I'm doing it. Um, so uh, it, it'll be a little bit of a quick and dirty reassembly, um, and bear that in mind uh, when we're watching this. So um, without further ado, let's get to the transmission. Um, this is the table where I'm working on it. That's the transmission in question right there. Um, a few other things. That's a, a solvent uh, bucket uh, that I used to clean the parts on the other transmission. And then I was also dipping um, all my parts in ATF prior to reassembly uh, on the on the good transmission. So um, here we go. That should probably be a pretty good view. Sorry, I just had to check something. Um, so this is the case of the transmission. Again, the one I'm not using. Um, <clears throat> the Bentley manual is something that is basically indispensable for this. Uh, page 38.7 is something that you're gonna wanna reference pretty um, consistently putting this together. I did, and I'm sure I'll reference it in this reassembly right now. So anyway, this is the case. This is where the main um, concentric clutches and gear assemblies and all go into the transmission. Um, this bottom here is where the valve body goes, um, which I currently have removed. This is the valve body, which I will put back in at some point soon here. Um, and uh, I, I found it on my previous reassembly, I found it quite useful to have the valve body removed um, during the assembly of the second gear brake band, but we'll get to that in a second. Anyway, um, so the first part that goes in is called the oil pump. This is the oil pump. This is actually the item that, uh, died. So this one I'm holding in my hand is no good. Um, there's a part in that goes in here, um, which looks like that now. It's not supposed to look like that. It was one piece and it broke. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm, like I said, I'm putting this in because uh, I don't want to lose parts and I want them all to be in one place. This 
oil pump has this round boss right here, and that goes uh, towards the bottom of the transmission, which is this way, and a little bit to the right of the bottom, and there are five bolts um, which drop through these five holes uh, to hold the oil pump in place. And I am not seeing, oh, here they are. But actually, uh, that's premature. It's not time to put those bolts in there yet. So that's in place. Uh, the next thing that goes in is uh, what's called the first reverse brake piston, which is this guy, um, vulcanized, or rubber that's vulcanized to a steel disc. And it has this little um, round uh, valve here, this spring-loaded valve here. And that lines up with the little guy there. Actually, what I'm going to do is put that in first. And then this goes in. And you take care to line up those holes. Now, Hmm. Okay, I realize a mistake that I made. I, I assembled this uh, second brake piston before the video because I thought it would be a time saver. But it, uh, it gets in the way in a second. Um, uh, according to the Bentley manual, you undo the circlip and then hit it with a hammer and that seems to work. So this is the second gear uh, brake band piston. Um, and what I now realize is that you have to wait on installing this because it gets in the way of another part that's coming shortly, um, which is this part. This is called the first reverse apply shell. Um, this can only go in one way because this hole here lines up again with the little um, valve in the piston. Um, and when you do it correctly, this little tang lines up with the slot that is more or less at the top of the transmission shell. Okay, so now that that's in, you have uh, what the Bentley refers to as the spring plate, or sorry, uh, yeah, spring plate with springs. Um, this is what you are waiting for before you install the, um, before you put those five bolts in that I was referring to earlier. So it goes in like this. You can see this little uh, cutaway that goes around that round boss that I was talking about earlier. Um, so now, now these five bolts that look like that, go in through the spring plate with springs. Um, there is a torque value for these, which I think I remember is seven Newton meters. Um, but I am just going to spin them in. because like I said, this is a quick and dirty reassembly. Um, this transmission will not be used in this uh, configuration. It's just gonna await a rebuild. So now actually is the time to put the second brake, the second gear uh, brake band piston in this um, rod, which is the actuator from the piston, uh, would not have allowed the installation of the first reverse uh, apply shell. So that goes in, then this goes in. This is a little bit of work to get in, um, but I just did it a few minutes ago, so I'm going to try to do it again. Um,
it has a retaining circlip um, which more or less just popped in on my first trans on the first transmission that I reassembled I did it in a much more laborious and complicated way involving a gigantic clamp um, but uh, this way seems to work. Uh, it just depends sort of how rigorous you feel like being. So anyway, that's in now. Um, I don't know if you heard that fall out. This is a spring for what's called the accumulator. And it goes in here. I'll show you that more in a second when I put the valve body back in. But anyway, so... So that's all in. Now, this is the second gear brake band. It's got these two little um, kind of bosses that are riveted to the ends. And one of them indexes with that rod uh, on the piston. And again, um, this is the reason, we're now getting into the reason why I found it nice to have the valve body removed. Because with the valve body removed, which normally goes here, you have good access to making sure these rods are um, properly engaging with the brake band. Um, so on the one side, it's actuated by this spring-loaded piston. Uh, on the other side, it is not actuated at all, but it is tensioned and adjusted with this rod, which comes in through the side of the case, and which is then tensioned with this set screw, uh, which also has a lock wash or a lock nut. Um, so you can see as I'm pushing in here, it's moving that, and I'm just going to reach in here and get this up into the right place. And you can see that as this comes in, it engages the band. Now, before we go too tight or tension it or, or do really much else with that, I'm going to come back to this position and now is a good time to install the direct reverse clutch, which is this one. Now this is what the brake, brake band piston goes around. Now, I personally found it easy to uh, use these two small needle nose vice grips for this job because you can attach them to these engagement tangs or ears and that allows you to drop this in in a way in it uh, because it's it's a it's a place that your fingers can't get to but there's one important thing I forgot to mention there is a thrust washer here this little plastic guy this orange plastic guy I think earlier years had a different shape or type, but anyway, this is this is a later year transmission, so don't forget that. Make sure it goes in. And this goes in, in the band. You'll notice there's another one of these thrust washers here. Don't forget about it. All right, there's a, there's a procedure for tightening the brake band. Um, again, refer to the Bentley manual. Um, and I'm not going to go through it right now because it would be too time consuming, but basically what you do actually do is tighten this set screw, um, un until you hit 10 Newton meters, then loosen it, then retighten it until you hit five Newton meters. Then from that point, back it off two and a half turns, um, but again, I'm not going to bother with all that right now because the next time that this transmission ever even gets looked at, 
it's going to get disassembled immediately for a rebuild. So it's not worth getting into all that right now. All right. Um, the next thing that you want to put in is this forward planetary gear set, which looks like this. Now this, uh, sorry, I'm going to back up just a second. This, um, this one, which is the direct reverse clutch, has a uh, clutch pack, what I call a clutch pack. It's basically a, a set of interleaved um, friction disks and steel disks. Um, and that is one of the replacement, the wear items, the replacement items on the transmission. So if you're rebuilding your transmission, you're going to um, pull out this circlip here that's at the top and pull all those out and at the very least inspect them. Um, if you're doing a full rebuild, you'll probably just go ahead and, and uh, replace those with the discs that you find in your rebuild kit. Um, and there's some measuring that you're gonna have to do to make sure that the end play is correct um, and uh, the way to, um, to tune that end play is uh, by using different um, there's a, there's a thick steel disc here at the top and that is available in different thicknesses. And, um, by getting that in different thicknesses, you adjust the end play. Um, in my particular transmission, those discs in there were, were toasted. Actually, it wasn't those. It was these that were toasted. Um, so it was a good thing that I rebuilt the, the tranny. Those were my two problems, the oil pump and that set of discs. Anyway, that's in there now. The, don't forget the thrust washer, and then it's time to install the forward planetary gear set. So, uh, but don't do that. Don't put in the planetary gear set until you put in the um, thrust bearing. And this thrust bearing came apart in its different components, which is not really a problem. Uh, anyway, thrust bearings are, are basically three components. There's a bottom washer, the uh, radial bearing itself, and then the top washer. And this top washer is stuck in here, and I'm not going to take the time to get it out because it doesn't really matter. But basically, now that I put those together, that's a complete bearing. But instead of having them fall out during assembly, I'm going to put these two components here. And then I am going to put this in. And it's a little bit of wiggling to get it to line up with all those friction discs. And you can basically feel when it's done. Okay, so that's in. Um, there's another thrust, thrust bearing here, which is kind of, well, I was gonna say it was stuck in place, but it's not really. This is a contained unit. It's basically the same double washer with the radial bearing inside, but it's contained, it's self-contained. So it won't fall apart. That goes there, don't forget it. Um, now the next thing that goes in is this big assembly. This assembly, which if you're very careful, it can be kind of treated as one. But I actually, after having done this a couple times, I don't really recommend that. Um, there's an advantage to taking it apart. This is the one, this inner part here is called the one-way clutch. It's a bit fragile. Um, you don't want it to fall out and fall apart. It's got these rollers and springs and this plastic cage, which is actually segmented. So you, you want to treat this with some care so that it doesn't fall apart. Now, like I said, this comes apart in pieces. So this is called the, I think it's the planetary, forward planetary gear set. So this is the next thing that goes in. Wiggle that in, should move nicely. Then you've got this double sun gear. It's got a short end and a long end. You've stuffed the short end in first. Okay, then you've got This, which they're calling the drive shell. Uh, this goes in next. Now, you, you see these notches. Those engage with those ears that I was holding the whole thing 
earlier with, uh, with the vice grips. And getting this to engage in this sun gear is sometimes a little bit tricky because the sun gear is spiral, but that wasn't that bad. Now watch, I'll go there. It, that's, that was the engagement you were looking for with the ears. Next thing that goes on is a very thin washer that also engages with the sun gear. And then the next thing, this is another kind of thrust washer. It's, um, it's got uh, bronze, I believe that's bronze, uh, centered to a steel body. And that goes on here, but the way that you really actually want to deal with it is by putting it here. You can see there are these three holes and these three ears or fingers, whatever you want to call them. And if you have enough ATF or gre assembly grease or whatever, it'll stay there. So that goes on. It fell off. I'm going to put some ATF on it. And hopefully that will do the trick. Nope, didn't do the trick. All right, I need to go. I'm gonna try one more time. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna get some grease. Not working. All right, getting grease. Sorry for that very unprofessional delay. I should have had the grease here. Anyhow, um, I'm gonna promote the adhesion of the grease by wiping off the ATF and put some grease on here. Okay, let's hope that stays while we assemble this. There we go. Okay, everything, at every step of the, of the assembly, you know, you should have like smooth movements and stuff like that. Um, here's another self-contained thrust bearing. Uh, this one has this um, kind of notched collar that goes down and actually snaps in to the top of the, uh, of that bore there. And then you've got another one of these thrust bearings or thrust uh, washers. Um, and that is easier to deal with because it's not gonna go anywhere. Now, the real reason why I um, decided to not treat this as a full assembly is because um, when you get to this stage, if you have the one-way clutch, it totally blocks this area here, this outer, um, sort of cylindrical slot area, which you need access to um, for the next step, which is another set of um, wear parts, uh, which is another set of uh, steel rings and friction discs. Um, <clears throat> so it goes in uh, steel, friction, steel, friction, steel, friction, steel, friction, for a total of eight, it's four of each. Now these are, these only go in one way. The way I looked at it is there's this larger gap and there's one in the middle. So if I, this one in the middle goes down in this corner and these two are close together and those are sort of clockwise of the point which is opposite this indexer. So if you have it like this, where you've got this guy in the middle and these two which are counterclockwise, it's not gonna go in. So that's one. Two, wrong way, one, two, 
one, two, one, two. So that's it. That's my set of eight. Now the next thing that goes in is the one-way clutch, which is right here. Again, I'm treating it very gingerly. You kind of want to get it to where it's sitting symmetrically here. And then you want to turn it counterclockwise, which um, pushes the, these little rollers back against their springs and gives them a little bit of play. until it drops in. If it's dropped in all the way, you will see access to this groove here, which is where we're gonna put a circlip in just a second. Um, but this, the outer, uh, the outer element of the one-way clutch, which is this steel ring, has a single notch in it. And you're gonna line up that single notch here with the lower left corner and there is a block, a very special block that goes in there, which ironically, I don't see right now. Here it is. Okay, here's the block. It's a special block. You can see it as a notch. That notch engages with the uh, retaining ring or the circlip. So you wanna put it in, uh, like this, 